الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأنذر عشيرتك الأقربين صدق الله العظيم The ayah of the Quran that I have just recited to you comes from Surah Al-Ahzab. It only has three words. This was one of the first messages that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. That now that you have been asked to go out in the people and convey my message to them, the first people that you must start with are your close relatives. And warn all, but starting with your close relatives. So our focus for the day is family. Family is such an important aspect in Islamic society that there is an entire chapter in the Quran, over hundred ayahs, that talks about a family. And the chapter is not called family. The chapter is called Joseph, Yusuf. This is the only place in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Joseph and his family as a family. And covers family from different aspects. The story starts very beautifully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ It is I who will tell you the story. Who's telling the story? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So telling a story to gain knowledge from is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why it is in our human nature that we get attracted to stories. So when we were little kids, somebody will tell us a story. At the end of the story, there's a moral. That you shouldn't do this or you should do this. This is such a beautiful story that it has many morals in it. So our concentration today will be only on those ayahs and very briefly because we have 20 some minutes or less to only talk about where the family is being talked about. And when we talk about family, there are two kinds of forces that act on a family. Now being humans, being individuals, we live in a society, we don't live in utopia, so there are good and bad forces that influence us. And there are negative thoughts and positive thoughts. There are negative people and there are positive people and that help us shape our thought process. In this story also, there are negative people and then there are positive people. Negative people far outnumber the positive people by many folds. Yet, in the end, the positivity wins. So extremely positive is a good thing because it not only injects positivity in an individual, but also helps this person inject back positivity back in the society. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens this surah with this that I am telling you a story of which you didn't know about. And then start from the childhood of Joseph. Now as a child, a lot of us has experienced this, that as a child, he looks up to his parents. A son would look up to his dad or mom. Anything that happens in his life, he rushed to his parents and tell them, this is what's going on with me. Exciting stuff. I saw a bug in the backyard. It was red. It starts out like that. Then when we start growing up, some other people come in that place. And all of a sudden, parents go in the backdrop. But in the story, you don't see that. In this story, it starts out that Joseph says, Oh, Father, Ya Abati, I saw a dream. And it ends with saying, Oh, Dad, you know, today the dream got fulfilled. And he's now a grown man. He's parent to kids. And he keeps that same status quo. So the story starts out, and the Joseph is telling his father, Yeah, Betty, oh dad, I saw a dream. 
رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا. I saw eleven stars and a sun and a moon, and I saw them bowing down to me. <coughs> That's so exciting. What is that, Dad? Because the Dad is a prophet, and Dad sees this special kid. Because prophets are a special kid to start with. They're not like normal kids. They're not like ordinary kids. They're protected kids right from birth. His dad says, "Ya bunaya." See, he said, "Ya abati." The dad says, "Ya bunaya." Equal respect, equal love, equal compassion. Ya bunaya. You know what? لا تقصص رؤياك على إخواتك. Do not tell this dream to your half brothers. There are ten of them. You're alone. They're much older than you, and you're by yourself, and they don't have good feelings towards you. على إخواتك فيكيد لك كيدا. They may plot against you, and it is not like they're bad people. It's not like I'm telling you to hate them or dislike them. إن الشيطان للإنسان عدو مبين. Because the Satan comes between the humans and causes unrest. So he doesn't fills the heart of his son with hatred. He is filling the heart of his son with the difference of right from wrong. They do not listen to shaitan. They are listening and see what's going on with these guys. A time will come when they will realize. But for now, keep quiet. Don't say anything to them. Now this reminds me of another story that happened. In this ummah, the grandsons of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, two brothers, Hassan and Hussein, a year apart from each other, little kid, six, seven year old, they fight with each other all the time, right? <coughs> These are boys, they fought with each other, one hit the other, and then they came rushing to the mom, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, Fatima al Zahra, and they said, you know what? He's fighting with me. And the other one said, "He hit me." And the mom is listening to their conversation. At the end, she says, "All I hear is that you both hear hit each other." And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells in the Quran, "لا تفسدوا في الأرض." Do not hit each other or cause chaos in the planet Earth. So since you both did that act, go and seek repentance. End of story. So right from the beginning, they're taught from Quran. This is the message of Allah. This is how you must live your life. This is what you can do. This is what you cannot do. Now these two kids grew up. Hassan and Hussein. They grew up. Of course, when we are grown up, we have arguments. Sometimes arguments are heated, and then we part from each other. That's exactly what happened. They part from each other for some time. A man came to Hussein from the Hassan, and he said, "Your brother was saying that if Hussein, my younger brother, would come to me, I will hug him, embrace him, and forgive him." And Hussein said, "I would love to do that every day, any time." But I heard from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam that the one who seeks forgiveness will enter Jannah before the one who forgives. And I want my older brother to take this privilege and enter the jannah before me. So the man went to Hassan and said, "Your brother says so and so." Fawahika Hassan and Hassan smiled and laughed. Came to his younger brother, hugged him, kissed him. He kissed him back, hugged him. This is the kind of brotherhood that Islam teaches us to follow, and the Quran talks about it, brothers. For a reason, there is a brothers. For a reason, there are siblings. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about strengthening this relationship. Now, these brothers who do not like Joseph, now they are plotting against Joseph. Joseph is almost a teenager. He's not an old man, strong man, but he's a teenager. But they're plotting against him. He said. You know what? Our da- a dad gives preference to this one kid over ten of us. One nahnu usba, and we are a group. I think our dad is clearly mistaken. So what should we do? One of them says, "Oktulu Yusuf, kill him." 
Allahu Akbar. These are brothers, half brothers, plotting against a brother who is just a teenager, merely a teenager, kill him. Or send him far away from here. When he's gone, we'll all be good people. We'll seek repentance, we're going to become good. Really? By sacrificing your, sacrificing your own brother, you want to be good? So one of them says, no, 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 no. La taqtulu Yusuf, don't kill him, he's a brother. You know what we're going to do? We're going to find a well, an empty well, which is in the route of the caravans. We'll throw him in the well. He will yell. He will make sounds. Some passerby will pick him up and they will take it away. You don't have to get your hands dirty. So now they're coming to the dad and they're telling dad, Ya Abana, Malaka, what's wrong with you? They're telling him, what's wrong with you? La ta'amanna ala Yusuf. You don't trust us with Yusuf? After plotting all this, this is what they are coming up with. Wa inna lahu la nasihun. We are with good advisors. Arsilhu ma'ana. Please send him with us. Ghadan, tomorrow, we're going for a picnic. Yalta'a wa yal'ab. We're going to play and have good time. Wa inna lahu la hafizun. We will guard him. We will protect him. We're ten. And the dad says, what if the wolf, come, wolf comes and eats him? Come on, dad, there are like ten of us. How is it possible? But they have planned to do it. They took him out, they threw him in the well, and the Joseph was taken by a caravan. Long story short, was taken by a caravan as a slave. Prophet of God, being thrown in the well by his own brothers, taken it out from the well, taking it as a slave, and slaves are not treated well, and was taken all the way from Kinaan to Egypt. In the slave market of Egypt, being sold as a slave boy. A free man, enslaved, being sold. This is humility for a human race, being sold as a slave. A guy picks him up. The guy who is next to the king, his title was Aziz, the chief minister, next to the king, vice president. And he picks him up. He sees the boy. He sees he's not ordinary kid. He tells his wife, let's take care of this kid. One day, we may adopt him or we may benefit from him. But long story short, he was wrongfully accused. He was sent to prison. He stayed in prison as a forgotten prisoner. He was in the prison for the crime that he did not commit it. And the years passed by. And Joseph comes out of a prison as a result of being able to interpret the dream of the king and also give him the solution of the problem, he now becomes the Aziz of Misr, the chief minister of the Misr. And there comes a time when his brothers walk in because their land is also struck by the famine, the same famine that got struck in Egypt. And now Joseph is all grown up, a young, handsome beautiful man sitting on the throne of the chief minister. The brothers, of course, don't recognize him, but as he, soon as he saw his brothers, because when he left them, they were all old, he recognized, oh my God, these are my brothers, but I should not reveal my identity yet, because the prophet of God do not do anything until Allah asks, commands him to do so. So he did not reveal any identity. And then what he does he noticed that they purchased some items. So whatever money they gave, he took that money and hid it in the same sack. Maybe they don't have any more money. Maybe they're so poor. Maybe they may not come back. And he asked them, do you have any other brother back home? There are 10 of you? He said, yeah, yeah, we have one younger brother. His name is Benjamin. That was a real brother of Joseph, younger than him. He said, okay, next time you come, bring him with you. Otherwise, you should not expect anything out of this place. So they go home, they open the sack, they find the belongings. They said, oh, now we can go back again. So now somehow they convince the dad to take the younger brother with them. And the Joseph approaches the Benjamin, takes him on the side and said, you know what? I am Joseph, but do not tell it to anybody yet. And then he makes a plot. Because according to the constitution of that land, Egypt, you cannot take anybody who is non-Egyptian and make him stay in the country. So the prophets of God would always follow the constitution of the land. 
They were law-abiding citizens. Even though it was a land of kuffar. But they were law-abiding citizens. So by the will of Allah, he made a plan. He put something in the sack of his brother so that he may be caught. And then when he is caught, the brothers, the other ten brothers, they said, Oh, فَإِنْ يَسْرِقْ فَقَدْ صَرَخَ خُلَّهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ If he had stolen anything, his brother Joseph also had steal, stole, stolen something in the past. And Joseph was outraged. But he kept it quiet. Because he knew it was a lie. It was a false accusation against Joseph. But he didn't say a word. He took Benjamin and pretend as if he will be put in the prison, but he didn't put him in the prison. So long story short, these guys went back and forth to the father, came back, approached the king again, and one last plea. And this is the time where he say, you are standing in front of me and begging, have you forgotten what you did to Joseph when he was begging, when he was asking, a little mercy from you? And now they're shocked. Yusuf? Are you Joseph? Are you Joseph? In the well, slave boy? Now the chief minister of the emperor of Egypt. Empire of Egypt next to the emperor. He said, yes. He said, oh. Now we have realized. We seek forgiveness. And they were humbled. And they were obliged. Now notice the words that Joseph says. Joseph doesn't say that forgive you. He says, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم Not only did I forgive you today, but nobody will even ever mention what you did to me. You will not hear it from my mouth. I complain that what you did to me when I was young, or what you did to my brother, will not even talk about it. End of story. That's a big message for all of us. Where we see something going wrong with our brother, we witness it, Allah hides it. But we go out in public and make it known. Well, you know what? So and so used to do that. But he repented. He's now a good guy. Don't talk about things of the people's past that they even they want to forget. And other people don't know, need to know about it. So now the long story short, the father comes to Joseph. And then notice, he speaks to his dad again and says, Ya abati. Same status quo, Ya abati. Hada ta'wil ru'yaya. When they all came and bowed down in front of him, he says, this is the interpretation of the dream that I saw, dad. The 11 stars are my 11 brothers. And the sun and the moon are you and mom. And you know what, my God made this dream come true. Now notice, now he's telling his dad all these years that he was away from his dad. His false accusers seek repentance, he forgave them. His brothers seek repentance, he forgave them. So notice how he's telling his story to his dad. He says, When I came out of the jail, he doesn't tell how he ended up in the jail. Because telling how end he ended up in the jail will put the lime loud on the people that accused him of going to jail. So he protects them. And then he says, وَجَاءَكُمْ وَجَاءَكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدْوِي And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you from the village to me. مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ نَزَغَ الشَّيْطَانَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي After the shaytan came between me and my brothers. After shaytan, remember what his dad told him when he was a kid? Because shaytan is his open enemy. So he says, yes, that open enemy came between us, but not anymore. Not anymore. So he protected them, didn't say anything about him. And that's exactly what the families are to do, stick together. Now one last thing, that there are people in every family that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates to help the rest of the family. Now some of them, we have noticed, a little shallow. Little shallow. And they start telling people, why do I have to do it? Why do I have to do it all the time? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about 
This particular thing in one of the hadiths through his Prophet is telling us this message. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ لِلَّهِ خَلْقًا Among the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are some creations. خَلَقَهُمْ They have been created لِحَوَائِجِ النَّاسِ To fulfill the needs of the people. They're blessed. This is the blessing that the person is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a special purpose. And on top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His Prophet is telling us, يَفْزَعُ النَّاسُ إِلَيْهِمْ On top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instills in the hearts of the people, go to these people, they are helpful, so they rush towards these people, فِي حَوَائِجِهِمْ And they bring their needs in front of these people. And what will be the reward of these people on the Day of Judgment? أُولَئِكَ الْآمِنُونَ مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ These are the people who will be protected from the adab, from the punishment on the Day of Judgment. Rawah al-Tabrani, Imam Tabrani reports it. So, everything has a cause and effect. But family is very important in all stages of life. And it comes as a handshake, to end process. It is not a one-sided story. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ ہمارے چینل کو سبسکرائب کرنا نہ بھولیں اور بیل کے آئیکن پر کلک کریں تاکہ آپ کو ریگولر نوٹفیکیشن اپ ڈیٹس مل سکیں